As we're progressing towards the last month or so of the season in MLB The Show 21, a lot of people want to know who is going to be endgame. Who are they going to be using on their team for the long run? Who should they be looking to replace as time goes on? Is this player really good enough to be using their team for the long run? And today, what we're going to be going through is comparing our endgame players that are likely to be coming out soon to our current players and what attributes we're gonna wanna be looking for in the long run here. I obviously do a lot of tier lists and things, reviewing players and suggesting different players for you guys to use. But at the end of the day, this is a personal decision you have to make based on players you like, players that you do well with now, players you're gonna be looking forward to wanting to use in the future. We have a bit to talk about today and let's get into it. What is going on guys? I appreciate you all stopping by watch another video. In case you are brand new, and have not hit that sub button down below double check and make sure you hit that we're uploading basically three four times a week giving you tips and information to get better the game also some game plays and such here and there so make sure you're sub down below in case you want to watch more mlb the show content also if you do enjoy the video make sure you hit that thumbs up helps get the video out there and hopefully you learn something new from it and finally if you want to come hang out with me on twitch come swing by twitch.tv slash scan want to come hang out with me watch me play the game ask me any questions and so on but let's get into our lineups here and the attributes we're going to be wanting to look for when choosing our end game players so this is my current lineup and overall i think this lineup could be an end game lineup a lot of these players are good enough to be used in the end game most 90 overall players are going to be usable into these last few months. A lot of it is just personal preference, players that you happen to hit well with. You got to find some combination of players you do the best with. But also, there are some things to look for in the attributes. You want to look for things like good fielding without sacrificing too much hitting. You want to look for the right type of hitters that are likely to be good into the latter part of the game here. And obviously, you want to make your best team if you're making, say, a World Series push or you just want to have your most competitive team out there. So we're going to go through some of the attributes that you should be keeping an eye out for when making your end game lineup decisions. I'm going to be treating this as if you're trying to make your best team. Let's say you're trying to make a World Series push in ranked seasons, playing on legend difficulty. If you're trying to make a really, really good team, this is going to mostly be focused on that. If you are someone who does play on like all-star difficulty, um, these things will still definitely work for you. But this is mostly an emphasis on like Hall of Fame and Legend difficulty where you're dealing with higher pitch speeds and smaller PCIs. I find that on all-star difficulty, most players are going to be really, really good there. And you just got to use players you enjoy. And contact isn't the biggest deal on there for many. So you, there, that threshold of contact, for example, is definitely a lot more minimal in comparison like Hall of Fame and Legend difficulty where you're trying to get to World Series. So overall with hitters, if you're playing on those higher difficulties, you do want good contact and power. It may sound a little redundant, but you want the best combination of contact and power. You ideally want as high of contact as possible without any sacrifice of power. There are some players like Jackie Robinson who have very, very good contact, but they sacrifice on power there are also guys like Cody Bellinger here who's great versus righties. He has 110 contact versus righty, but he has 91 contact versus left. And not that that's too low for many people, but he's, he's sacrificing a little bit of contact for that 125 power versus left. And you want the best combination of these two things because you want the high contact to get those bigger PCI so you square up the ball more often. But also you want that high power so when you do square up that ball more often, you're hitting the ball harder. You're hitting balls to gaps, hitting it over the wall for homers. And in terms of MLB The Show, that's how people like to play. A lot of times you get players with lower power, guys like that new Tony Gwynn that dropped, guys like Jackie Robinson. And at this point in the game, they're not going to hit for as much power. And that lack of power is going to be more noticeable just because of the total amount of options we have. We have a lot of players with 100 plus power versus both sides. You're going to notice with these lower power players, they're just going to hit a lot of singles. They're going to line out a lot to outfielders when you hit those perfect, perfect fly balls just because you don't have the power to consistently hit homers, especially in some minor league parks and such that people play at all the time. So you want to look for the best combination of power and contact, ideally. Whatever that contact and power threshold for you is, it's different based on your scenario. Like for me, I'm pretty good at Hall of Fame difficulty and I'm kind of mid on legend but i want to make sure i'm capitalizing on my contact especially on legend 
because those PCIs are extremely small there. When you're facing guys like the Grom, Verlander all the time, your PCI is like a chicken nugget. So ideally you want to have good contact, at least versus righties, because that's who I face most of the time. But I want good versatile hitters. Guys like Mookie, Mickey Mantle, Frank Thomas, and Chipper are pretty solid hitters, well-rounded versus both sides. And I want that good contact and power combination, especially when I'm trying, you know, put out my best team. And as we get to the end game, a lot of hitters are going to be like this, especially when you get, say, Finest, if that drops in the future soon, postseason cards. You see a lot of really absurd cards like this. So you want to find hitters like that. And you probably don't want to use hitters with guys like Craig Biggio, for example, with like a little lower power. But you don't want to use someone who has low contact and high power like this Gary Sanchez. His part in the game, especially on those higher difficulties, this PCI would be very small and very difficult to get hits with. For me, on Hall of Fame difficulty, I'm looking for 90 plus contact, at least at this point in the game. Probably the same boat, but that is just for me. I suggest to everyone, if you're playing at this point in the game, you want at least 100 contact versus both sides or the matchup that you think you're going to be facing more often, like right-handed pitchers. You want at least 100 contact so you get a good enough size PCI so you're squaring up the ball as often as possible. And for me at this point, I again want 100 plus power ideally too. But if there's a certain player like Jackie Robinson that I happen to do well with lower power, I can get away with starting them so because they have great contact. And again, this is a combination that you got to find so he's got to find a number that works for you. Like Larkin, I've been really liking. Cody Bellinger's 118 versus right is great, um, but his contact versus left is definitely a struggle. You got to find something that works the best for you and your team. Defense, on the other hand, is something we want to keep an eye out on as we get towards the end game, especially at positions like shortstop, second, in the outfield. You want to try to maximize your defense. As we get towards the end game, you have guys like 99 Trout, Willie Mays, Ken Griffey Jr., and we already have guys like Mantle and Hank Aaron who have really great hitting attributes and also like diamond fielding. So ideally, when you're making your team, you want to find that combination of great defense and power because those players are going to be the most wanted. I think most outfields will have two of those dudes with like diamond defense, speed and great hitting attributes. And there may be one just bat focused outfielder that will stick in the outfield for many teams. Guys like Vlad Sr. are great bats but they sacrifice some defense. So I think you're going to see a mix of things like that. But ideally, you want to look for at least good enough defense in these positions, especially shortstop and center field. Even though you can run some lower defense dudes like Trey Turner out there because it's high speed to so get towards the end game. Those high defense options are going to be the most wanted. And if you are going to put a bad defender in the outfield, put him in left field or right. Um, hide them in the corner. If they have a good arm, you can use them in right field. But other than that, you probably want to put them in left field because it would be the least punishing position for you. Um, but that is just, again, down to your personal preference to get to the end game. And overall, with your offense, you want to find that balance of things. Um, look for different handedness. Look for a good balance of lefties, righties, switch hitters. So you don't want your line to be too right-handed heavy right now because of all the main righty pitchers we have. As we get to the end game, you're going to want to find a combination of players that does the best for you. So like in the outfield here, I'm trying to run two lefties right now. And as the game goes on, I'm probably going to run a lefty at first base. I love Frank Thomas, but I'll probably end up getting Lou Gehrig whenever he comes out and put him at first because he's a lefty. And then I'll have one lefty in the outfield, which will probably end up being Ken Griffey Jr. And then have another outfielder like Hank Aaron in left field or someone else just to balance my lineup with lefties, righties, and switch hitters. In terms of the rotation, what we're gonna be looking for in the end game is a pitch mix that you do well with. A lot of people are different. Some people have pitch mixes they just suck with, and a lot of people have those pitchers they somehow do well with it. So look at pitchers you have in your rotation right now. Look at the total amount of pitches they have that you're doing well with. Guys like Felix I love because his sinker, cutter, fastball mix pitches very effectively for me. We wanna look for things like that, but also a combination of hits per nine as well. You look at some pitcher options we have at this point in the game. You have some pitchers like David Price, for example, who's a 97 overall. Well, actually, he doesn't have the worst pitch mix ever. But the issue with him is his low hits per nine. It's very difficult to pitch effectively with that lower hits per nine on those higher difficulties because it makes those PCIs bigger and they become far more hittable with that. 
Guys like Robbie Ray, on the other hand, he has the, the hits and keys for nine to be dominant, but the pitch mix is very difficult. Doesn't have the most velocity on his stuff. A lot of his pitches are in a similar range of pitch speeds. And it's difficult to, to mix your pitches properly to really induce swings and misses and weak contact with them. So even though PCIs are smaller, people are getting a good read of him easier. So you gotta find a combination of things that work for you. For me, I'm looking for high hits per nine, overall good velocity, but if I can't get good velocity, I'm looking for like sinkers and cutters and other pitches that I could use effectively to induce weak contact, and get my opponent's timing all over the place. Something that you do the best with that fits your pitching strategy. Is the same with the pen, but I've learned with the relievers that there is a lot less depth. You have a lot less options in the pen and the end game options. Just because as we move on here, there aren't that many lefty relievers, for example, that are really good. And there aren't many like 99 relievers with great pitching attributes. So guys like Chapman, Mariano, Andrew Miller, Deuce Gossage, Kenley Jansen, they're going to be in most people's bullpen just because of everything they bring. And they'll likely stick in most bullpens just because of the attributes and the pitch mixes they have. There are a lot of like solid relievers like Devin Williams, Edwin Diaz, Alex Reyes that are going to start to fade out and maybe stick in the back end of some people's bullpens. But overall, like these guys are going to be the best of the best just because the overall pitches they throw, the velocity and the really good hits and Ks per nine. We're going to get some more relievers, I think, but it's you're going to treat them a lot the same as starting pitchers. You do want to count for the attributes, look for as good of hits per nine as possible. But again, with relievers, a lot of them have great hits per nine anyway, unlike many of the starters. So you want to really just focus on those pitch mixes and what you do effective with. But overall, that is what I'm looking for as we get to the end game. This is what my lineup is now. And as we go on the future here, I'm expecting a couple more outfielders to replace Bellinger and Luis Gonzalez. Like I said before, I'm going to be looking for a first baseman, hopefully a good hitting catcher as well. And then finally, short stop. I'm thinking of getting another stop option as we get to the end game with hopefully better contact and power versus both sides. But overall, we'll have to see how this goes, the type of players we get. With my prediction where I think we're going to be going in the future of this game, I think the options are going to be fleshed out. We have a lot of very good players at each position. And you have a lot of options to choose who you do best with. So those are the things I'm keeping an eye out for to make my end game team. At the end of the day, this is a decision you have to make based on who you do best with. But I'm hoping to lead you in the right direction give you attributes and things to look for as you build your team. So let me ask you, what players are on your team that you think you want to use for the rest of the year? What players are you looking to replace soon as we get, say, postseason cards and finest cards as this next month or so goes on? And what are you looking for in an endgame player? What attributes do you focus on the most when deciding who to use in your lineup? And which attributes do you really not care that much about? I hope you guys enjoyed. Definitely let me know your opinions in the comments down below. And Hopefully you guys learn something new with this. You guys have a great rest of your day. I'll see you all again on next video later this week. This is.